Today we are headed to Nebraska. I have an amazing day planned for Nick. He is the recipient of the Legacy Project for the state of Nebraska. So when I was younger, I was very lucky and didn't really have a lot of problems with CF. I skipped a lot of treatments and was able to get away with that and was very fortunate to live, you know, what most people consider a normal life. When I was a child, they told me, you know, they told my mom, you probably won't be able to play sports. And so at that point, I was already playing sports with my brothers in the backyard. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm going to go out for everything I can. I think one of the hardest transitions a CFR has to make is when you hit 25 and you're no longer on your parents' insurance. The mental toll that it takes to manage your own insurance, navigating when your insurance tells you you have to get something from this pharmacy and it's mail order, so there's phone calls. Those phone calls, I joke with my wife about this, but I also cry in private that I feel like I lose days of my life with how much time I've spent on the phone just trying to get medications. I kept CF a secret um, most of my life. I'm 36 years old. When I was 32 years old, I had a close call and almost lost my life. And it's been from that moment forward to now at 36 that I finally decided to start not only just being open about it, but broadcasting it loudly. Thankfully, when I was at a moment where I finally got to a place that I thought I'm ready to allow joy in my life in that way was probably three weeks before I met my wife. And um, I was very f upfront with her about it from the beginning. And it felt for the first time like now I'm no longer a one man team. The comfort that you get from speaking up about it it's not going to be there if you're not talking about it. I often say that Kima, my dog, is the angel of my lungs. She comes down with me every day when I do treatments. I could get up at four in the morning because I'm coughing and having a coughing fit, but Kima will come and join me every single time. Kima helps me be excited about anything. I actually began counseling in 2012, shortly after my father died. In therapy, I always have a space to process, a space to discuss all those issues with healthcare and insurance, and someone who shares in my frustration. So I have known Nicholas for about seven years. Um, we've seen each other on and off for about that time. Um, and he, you know, when you ask about how he could be an inspiration, to me, he is an inspiration. He is, I think, the epitome of being a self-advocate. He's a fighter, he's resilient, um, he's very diligent about his medical health, but he is also equally um, committed to his mental health. He has surrounded himself with a wonderful support network. He's got a loving family, uh, his wife, tons of friends, and of course, Kima. Um, his husky and she comes to our sessions but yeah he, he's definitely a resilient um, very inspirational person and I've learned a lot from him too. For the state of Nebraska I am honored to present this to Nicholas Bell. So here you go. I am super excited to have the Afflo vest so that I can take it and go camping with my wife and the dogs. We love to go on hikes. Um, definitely plan to bring it along for those times. One of the nicest things about it is just even the freedom within your own home to be doing treatments, moving about. When you work and you have a chronic illness, it's a lot to manage and maintain. The fact that I'm able to do some of the things that I love, teach poetry, write poetry, um, work inside the prisons doing creative writing. I've worked for the Nebraska Writers Collective for about nine years now. Five years ago was when we started the prison effort. We go into high schools, we go into middle schools, we work with other nonprofits. We ask them to do a lot. 
You know, and I have to explain this to my colleagues who are not in CF care, is that, uh, it, that we ask our patients to do a lot. And, um, you know, we're always, I'm always inspired by how much they do every day. Nicholas is a leader, you know, leader in the community. Um, and he leads by his decisions to give of himself. You know, uh, it's amazing to me that somebody who spends so many hours a day having to, to keep himself breathing, you know, by treatments and everything else, is, is willing to give of his time to others who are less fortunate, whether those who are in prison, those who are less fortunate in the community, uh, young people. He gives of his time and of his talent. And uh, we have a lot to learn from, all of us have a lot to learn from Nick. Uh, so I'm, it's just a real inspiration to, to be with him in clinic and to know him personally. It's people like you that really embody everything that I initially set out for this to be. And I think that it's being open and vulnerable and willing to, you know, willing to really make an impact in the CF community. And I feel like you've really done a good job of that. Um, and I know that this is going to help hopefully enhance your life and your treatments um, with CF. and. Um, I can't wait for you to, you know, sort of keep showing the CF community and leading by example like you do, mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Life with cystic fibrosis is a never-ending trust fall, hoping after every exhale, my lungs will catch me on the inhale. When I was born, the doctors told my mother I wouldn't make it past 28. Yet here I stand at 36 every birthday an act of defiance no why me no why this my body a balled up fist of resistance i'm not just battling this illness i'm david fighting a war against the healthcare goliath but i will not be silenced every day i'll keep fighting till i take down this giant